What is up everyone, it's Sir Deathbids. Welcome back to another video. In this one, I will be showing how I made this bridge terrain. So the idea for this actually came from, I thought it was from my mind randomly. I was thinking about bridge designs and I had a plastic shell from an Xbox 360 remote to use. I kept it because I remember Comstar Gamza used it for some trash terrain and I thought that it looked cool. So that's what I use here. The Blood River was an original idea, I thought at first but it was based on polluted rivers that turned red and also a river from Dawn of War Soulstorm. And I just realized not until recently that that was the exact map that I played in my playthrough a long time ago, which is funny. So I remembered it like a year later or something. I started this project with a sheet of thin corrugated cardboard, which I should have used something else, Dollarama phone board, and this Xbox remote packaging. You can see this here, looks pretty nice, there's a bunch of holes in it and there's little lines. I cut the cardboard into a more manageable rectangle and rounded the corners to create a base. I used some scissors and my hobby knife for this. I also put lines on there just to know where the bridge went and this is what it looks like with just a flat base. You can see in there as well. I put the package on the base for a test fit and the masking tape on the tab as well just to keep it held in place with the rest of the stuff. I outlined the packaging and cut out a rectangle to fill the plastic and become the flat section of the bridge. I used my hobby knife again to cut this foam board and hot glued it onto the top. Looks like this. I didn't like the outline of the remote underneath, so I folded, taped, and glued some loose leaf together and also used extra chunks of foam board for support, like so. And now it looks more uniform on the table and like a better bridge. Here I was just making sure that it'll still sit flat, and it does, which is good. Now you might think I'm crazy for these next few steps, but just bear with me, it looks good. I outlined where the bridge and river would sit on the cardboard, and wrapped the base in saran wrap. I also plugged a hole on the underside of the bridge to prevent water effects from leaking. This hole in the packaging was originally used for the cable. I took some cardboard-like packaging, and an egg carton, which are both made of paper pulp, and I used a technique similar to paper mache. The technique involves wetting and ripping up the papery packaging, letting it dry and hot gluing the pieces together, then coating it in wet paper towel with PVA glue on top. When this dries it creates almost like a hard shell of the shape that you wanted and you have a cheap material to build your hills out of. This is a technique which I've used before, I think that I invented it, but it was kind of just based on paper mache, so I didn't really invent it. This way of doing things looks ugly at the start, but comes together later, and as you can see it forms a recessed area, like a river, which is good, because that's what it is. I let this dry in the sun to get hard, and then I had primed it black, just to give it a little bit extra strength, and hold everything together, make sure that it's all good, gives it a nice coating as well of paint which is good as well, because I was going to put water effects so I didn't want paper towel to still be absorbent. I missed some spots in the corner, so I had to fill those later. As you can see now, I glued the bridge onto the base, and I had painted the inside before I did this with black acrylic paint, just the inside on that loose leaf. The ramps will go on the side like this, as I show with my hand. I used a combination of different materials for basing, including sawdust and sand. This particular sand is very fine and from the hole where the dugout now is. I still have to base underneath the ramps and paint there before I add those. Also cut the rectangles from foam board to be used for ramps as well in this step. I'm still not done with basing underneath where the river goes, but I've done pretty much everywhere else. In this step I used a series of 2.5 pound weights and foam board which prevents the weights from sticking to the piece to combat warping from the cardboard. That's where I was saying I should have used a different material. Here I'm pretty much done basing and added a foam board chunk to remove a weird gap which I thought looked funny in the bridge. I also added this gear from an old clock or something and also put the screw on the bridge. I spray primed the top of the bridge and the base with sawdust on it as well. The foam board had warped slightly, so I later glued that corner down and I just put some pressure on it to keep it down for a bit until the hot glue hardened. I finished priming in black, and then I spray painted on this reddish brown color onto the ground, and I just kind of got a few different spots, give it almost this reddish brownish hue. I think this is mahogany maybe, that's the color. 
The other side was looking quite plain on the other side of the river, opposite to the gear. So I took some Dollarama plants, which I got a long time ago, and some spare orc bits from my bits box as decorations, which I still need to paint later. I had a skull piece from a set of skulls that I had for quite some time, which would be attached to the bridge like so. I glued the plants in and painted the ground, starting with brown, putting grey on the rocks, and dry brushing a few lighter browns and greys. Here's the inside view so far. I still have to fix this one corner which looks bad and paint it as well, underneath the ramps. Speaking of these ramps, I peeled off the paper from the foam board and painted those black. I found three mini Jenga blocks just sitting in my basement from uh, old toys for supports and made the fourth by gluing two pieces of foam board together. That's how it'll go under the ramps and I glued the orc down and painted the gear a copper color. I peeled and repainted the top flat part because I didn't like the wrinkled paper look on top. I thought it would look better with just the foam exposed which matches those ramps. I painted the orc corpse which I think looks decent and it's actually rather good looking. I painted the pillars black and then later painted them silver you'll see in a minute or two. I wasn't sure what I was doing outside but it looks like I made the bridge entirely black and ready for the next coat of paint. I made the bridge grey using I think it's like grey neutral tone 5 paint just some cheap acrylic paint, and made rails out of corrugated cardboard and mini popsicle sticks. You peel off the first paper layer off the cardboard and there you go, there's some tin. I spray painted the ramps dark grey as well, just to give them another coat of paint before I put on the same grey as the bridge. I put sand and paint on the ramps for a small amount of texture using that same fine sand as before. The ramps and supports were glued and painted to match the rest. I was showing here that the ramps are flexible, but can also support a bit of weight, and here's a close-up of the supports as well. I curled up some small green wire into barbed wire, wasn't quite sure where to place it for a while. This is the same wire I used when experimenting with the gargoyle's whip. I twisted around my hobby knife to make it curled, like that, and I thought maybe I could put it in the river, but I changed my mind, and put it elsewhere later. The skull was painted gold, and black paint was put into the recessed eyes, giving it some depth. I also made the rails silver and the screw as well silver. I added darker grey on the recessed areas in the remote packaging, those little lines which were in the packaging which was nice. That was a really good touch on this bridge, I think that really made it come together a little bit. I painted underneath the ramps, making it black, even though shadows probably hide that part. I applied a black wash to the cement parts and brown wash to the metal. Those are made of watery paint. A few chunks chipped on the ramps that was easy to fix. I found a spot for the wire, it just sits in that cardboard and it's not even glued down. I really like the texture. It occurred from using normal spray paint on the foam board back when the paper was still on. So only a little bit of the corrosion power of the acetone in the paint got to the foam. I built a mini river here to test the water effects which I did use for full size because they worked. For the Blood River, I used Woodland Scenics Water Effects, Agrax Earthshade, Caribou Crimson, and Blood Letter Glaze. Here's some pouring, mixing, more pouring, and more mixing. I used a combination of the colors until I was happy with the look. If I had some, I would have used resin dyes for a more transparent final product, but I just had these paints, so it's good enough. It turned out fine after drying, though it still looked slightly opaque. On the full size one, I used a container to catch drips, and the container was full of newspaper I think, to absorb any extra water effects. And I applied the water in small amounts, tilting the thing to get full coverage. I did more, but this was after one pour. After drying, here's the final product that we ended up with, and I'm proud of this piece. It even made a cameo in my spooky video. I think I have the side with the gear on that, so look out for that. My favorite thing is that dead orc and the fact that it's wide enough for vehicles to go over. So that about concludes this video. 
Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do give me a like and a sub as it really helps me out, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!